Uh, I'm Matt Harris, founder and CEO of Bloom Credit, and we are a B2B API that helps provide access and analysis for financial institutions who are looking to better serve their consumers with credit outcomes. And what I want to talk to you about today is actually uh, Andy. Um, and Andy just had his first child, so congratulations to Andy. Uh, and he needs to childproof his home. And the thing is, he doesn't have the out-of-pocket finances to actually go do so. So what Andy does is, he's not really aware of his credit score, but he goes and applies for a loan anyway. And he actually gets declined. Who knew, right? But when he gets declined, he's not actually sure why he got declined and what was wrong with his credit score. And the thing is, is that the loan uh, originator he uh, applied with, Acme Loans, didn't actually tell him anything of what was wrong. So he looked into his credit report, and what he found was that he had a couple of unpaid collections he wasn't aware of. He paid them off, saw his credit score improve, made a few more on-time payments, and all of a sudden was able to actually go qualify for a loan. However, he never reconsidered Acme Loans. And the thing is, is that Acme lost a valuable customer, specifically because they were focused on the initial outcome rather than actually serving Andy over the long-term holistic lifetime of his loan. When you actually look at what that consumer is looking for, it begs the question of, what if instead of actually declining Andy, Acme could have worked with him on his financial health and provided value over time to retain him as a customer? Because the thing that we often find is that consumers, they're not so worried about the idea of like, hey, am I gonna get my loan? Usually what they care about is this long-term financial outcome. And the thing is, is that banks aren't necessarily set up to serve consumers in a holistic way over a long-term period. They look at it as what we're doing right now how can I serve this customer with this particular loan today? And so what ends up happening is that these customers fall through the cracks. And it begs the question of how do we get here as lenders and financial institutions? And the thing is, is that when you look at how a bank was actually built, it wasn't built with the idea of using technology to serve customers. For decades, people actually were using human beings as a customer service tool, or if I walked into a branch and said, how do I qualify for a mortgage? An actual teller would walk me through the process. Then Web 2.0 starts coming around, and what happens is banks start moving online more and more. Businesses like Lending Club pop up, and as a result, banks start moving more and more online in terms of how they start to try and serve their customers. But their technology was never built to service them that way. So the result being is that as customers started moving to services like Credit Karma and Mint, the banks couldn't necessarily keep up. And so what happened is that as we've continued to progress, you actually start to see that customers are looking for services on par with Amazon or Apple in terms of how they get serviced by their financial institution, you actually see these companies entering the market. But banks, credit unions, lenders, they haven't kept up. And the result being is that we're actually seeing both sides not necessarily win. And the thing is is that consumers would actually provide the data that would be necessary to actually serve them with more personalized offers in terms of where they're going long term. But banks haven't necessarily thought to serve customers that way, right? So the result being is that there is actually no avenue for them to do so to make the bank more effective. And the result being is that both sides are losing. 28% of consumers in the United States aren't considered financially healthy. And simultaneously, what you see is that even though 60% of these consumers could have qualified for a loan within six months or less, lenders are declining 15 times the number of, 15 times the number of people they're giving loans to. And the result being is that both sides lose. Lenders have high cost per acquisition and low loan volume. Consumers aren't getting access to the loans they need. And it's not working for us. So how can we actually ensure that consumers are getting the financial support they deserve? The way we look at it at Bloom is that the idea isn't necessarily what is this existential transaction. The idea is what is happening over the lifetime of this consumer's uh, interest in what they're doing for their financial health. So rather than giving someone a, hey, we can give you this one right now, what if we preface things in the concept of, you're trying to get a mortgage? Cool. Here's the timeline and the number of steps it takes for you to get there. How can we monitor you to get there in the capacity that you need? And what you actually see is that when lenders and banks try and take the strategy, it works. So look at BorrowWell. Canadian uh, lender, what they went and did is they provided a credit health tool. And by doing so, they launched as a top five financial app in Canada with over 900,000 users in a few short months. Bank of America does the same thing goes and launches a targeted financial chatbot for their customers as a means of actually serving them more effectively with Bank of America products, million users in three months. And so the thing is, is that at Bloom, we believe that actually by providing these customers these tools, this is what ultimately helps build financial outcomes. This is what lenders are looking for as a means of actually growing their business, but also making their customers happy. And when you actually look at the numbers behind this, it's really easy to see that it's not that large of an opportunity. Sorry, it is a large opportunity, but it's not that large of a lift to actually go get those consumers ready. If lenders were able to improve 1% of their declines, you'd actually see that they'd have a 10% bump in loan origination volume and their cost per acquisition would go down. 
And all that would take is just rather than declining someone with an adverse action notice, give them a few next steps. What is it that you need to go do? And so the thing is, is that you don't just need to take it from us. The consumer is actually going to thank you for this. I mean, in this case, they're thanking us. But ultimately, what you see is that you're actually able to improve customer credit scores and that they're appreciative of the fact that someone walked them through the path. And so the way that we look at it is that there's actually an opportunity for a win-win financial outcome here. That rather than looking at this from such a transactional point of view, that lenders actually have an opportunity to actually serve customers the long-term health in mind. That by doing so, that you actually be able to see that customers would have better satisfaction with their lenders. Maybe you look at them the same way that they look at an Amazon or an Apple. Simultaneously, lenders wouldn't be cut off at the knees of the opportunity to actually go grow their business and have high cost per acquisition, low MPS scores, and low origination volumes. So that's the opportunity we see moving forward. Can we actually change our behavior as financial institutions rather than looking at the consumers and saying they don't have intent? Really, it might be us that actually isn't giving them the tools that they need to actually be successful. I'm Matt, and if you want to reach out to me, here's one way to do it. Thanks.